Hello then and welcome here at Professor Haman Manyora's YouTube channel. My name is Samuel Irungo and when you see me just know this is the big question. So today we're going to be having a conversation on yes. devolution. Uh, devolution has been in play for the last 10 years and this year we're going to be having the third generation of governors being elected to 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 this Office. position. Yes. Okay, and before we go to this uh, conversation, how are you doing, Prof? I'm doing well. Okay, today you just look like yeah, uh, you're just headed somewhere for yes. lunch. You... No, I want to go to the village. Oh, you want to go to the village? Uh, my sister lost his son, my nephew, so I want to go and see if we can escort the boy. Okay, well, I'm so yes. sorry for yeah. your loss, Professor. It's and life, my, yeah. my deepest condolences to you and the family. Thank you. Okay, so uh, devolution has... Uh, now, let me ask you this question. Has devolution worked over the, from 2013 to date? Do you think it has been done or should we look at it maybe get a uh, do away with it or should we maintain it no you look at it in terms of some of the things it has done so if you are saying whether it has worked or not it's a very difficult question but basically yes it has worked because there are counties which have seen a kilometer of tarmac for the first time since independence mm -hmm. they have seen a certain hospital for the first time since independence so yes it has worked there are things that have happened on the ground in counties which had never been done had never happened, and most likely were not going to happen in the next 50 years. Okay. So to that extent, it has worked. But there are issues we shall need to address as we move forward. Okay, maybe what are some of these issues that you'd love to be changed? Most of the things, there are two major issues. First of all, in the long run, we cannot have a situation where counties are depending on money from the government, okay. from the exchequer. They will have to do like other devolved units elsewhere in the world, okay. where they just get minimal support from the from government. The government but they raise their own revenue. So we'll have to figure out how. But before we get there, we need to find out, are we getting value for every shilling we send down there? Just the bottom line is, are we getting value for every shilling we send to the county? The answer is certainly no. Okay. Yeah. So we need to have to put in place laws and structures uh, to ensure that every penny that goes down there is of benefit to Kenyans. So you're, basically what I'm getting from you is that uh, counties in Kenya need to be independent, generate their own revenue. Yes, yes. And, uh, the long and that, run. Okay. Yes. Okay, let me ask you something else. Uh, but now. with a rider. With a rider. Not like the old county councils mm -hmm. chasing people on the market centers for licenses and the, and the taxes. They have to be a little more innovative than that. And has development been fair countrywide uh, across all counties? Or uh, some counties, uh, people feel that uh, there has been a uh, low output from the counties. No, for obvious, obvious. They can't be the same. 47 governors can't perform the same. Governors in America don't perform the same. Sometimes because of, uh, because of the nature of the county. But sometimes because of the caliber of the governors we elect into office. So there are those governors who, other things remaining equal, have done a lot more than other governors. Yes. So how do we how do we ensure these uh, governors uh, achieve the maximum? You know, uh, people are complain. Uh, there is an outcry from people saying that the Senate is sleeping and that they are receiving salaries for work that they are not doing. Yeah, many people that, uh, are governors sleeping. are not performing. So how do we look onto this? MCS governors? are sleeping. Uh, uh, senators are sp sleeping. Members of oversight, oversight, it should be a, a, a multi-pronged, uh, multi-pronged approach. The members of National Assembly MPs are not necessarily, are not directly in charge of county funds. But as elected leaders and representatives of the people, they should ensure money that is devolved does work, even if that's not their direct work, because that's the work of the Senate. Mm -hmm. And the Senator must also ensure the governor works. But MCS, but this goes down to one problem, the caliber of people we elect. When people are electing MCA, they just think it's an MCA is from your clan. Okay. He bought you a drink. He gave you 100 shillings. You don't know this is a man who will ensure that your county succeeds. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't play his role, how will your, your governor will go to sleep? Okay. Yeah. Now, people are feeling that impeachment of govern, governors has become political, that someone is not impeached due to failure, uh, lack of performing uh, in county level, but uh, political uh, government interest. Someone is failing to do what he is expected to do, then he's impeached. Is that true? Well, ideally, you should not just impeach somebody because you, for, the, for the fun of it or for the politics of it. That's wrong. Okay. But in the world of politics, that's how it have, works. It is politics. So it's what is happening. Yes, that people it is. Are it, being yeah, impeached. it is politics. It is so. You must be, you must be 
a politician. Now how do we come out of that? Well, we shall, we shall, you know, we are now, a culture is developing, a tradition. Okay. Some of these things are, are a product of long periods of, of trial and error, uh, of, of, of uh, certain ways of doing things. Then a, a tradition emerges. Then we say in Kenya, this is ha what happens in, the, in terms of county governments. So sometimes either, either impeachment will be the order of the day or they completely disappear. But we are seeing the formative stages. Yeah. There are countries like Italy. Why impeaching a prime minister and come a kunya chai too? You go to the restaurant and before you finish your lunch, you hear the prime minister has gone. It's as simple as that. Recently there was one who went, I don't know where, some other country. It's mm -hmm. so normal. Israel, India. Uh, okay, now that will put yeah. the governor, governors on toes. Yes, so they should. They, they, should. they should. They are going to be impeached. And they should, and they should play their politics right. They should know who can be their running mate properly, who can deputize them. They should know which party to work with. You know, you can win because you have manu manipulated the people. You win. But you don't have majority. You must know to be a governor, you also need the numbers in the county assembly. Okay. They have to know these things. But I'm saying in the future, these things will, 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 will shape out. We shall see the shape mm -hmm. it will take here. Yeah. Okay, now uh, Gladys Boz uh, Shole, I believe you know her, a uh, member of parliament uh, from Wasink Issue. Yes. She feels like uh, development in this country has, is, uh, she compares it, she says that it's uh, brick and mortar. Yes. She says in terms of infrastructures, yes, infrastructures are there. Yes. Uh, let's say things like milk coolers, uh, machines for coffee, processing coffee, they are there. Yes. But when we go down to the ground, coffee, uh, production of coffee is poor. Yes. Uh, there is low uh, output of milk from the cows. Yes. So how do we handle this issue? By being professional in the things we do. Okay, what do you mean? To begin with, uh, the executive must be a functional executive. Okay. The president must allow his ministers to work, number one. If you allow ministers to work and the entire public service structure, there are serious policies already there. There are educated men and women who have put down policies. They are there. Let those policies be implemented. So when it comes to animals and crops, so we have proper crop husbandry. We have proper animal husbandry. And the rest will just fall in place. Milk production is poor because policies are gathering dust in these government offices, in the universities, in libraries. There are policies. We can, we can achieve the 60 liter or whatever, 60 liter per day from an animal. We, 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 the, the, the documentation is there. People have done benchmarking. We know what needs to be done. You allow the right persons to do the right thing. So it must start when Ruto takes over or when Raila takes over. The beginning point, and I've told Raila and I've told Ruto, the beginning point is to ensure you have the right men and women in office. I wish they could invite me a sit with them. I look at the list. I tell Toa Uyu. Uyu always go waziri. With this country collapsing the way it is collapsing, Uyu hata kusaidia kama waziri. Uyu Bush weka. Uyu Jad naona hata kusumbua. I think they should uh, invite you so that we, we remove this bad element. Yeah. In the name of Raila Australia. should sit down with me with Ruta. Tell you what is your list. Let, give me your list. Don't worry. Don't put me there. But let me look at your list. Mm -hmm. This is okay. Ngoa huyu ngoa. There are many with one or two. And is it Let possible? me give you an example why. Uh -huh. If you want to know what I'm saying is true. This country in the past few years, by few I mean like 20 or so. Okay. People can only remember Michuki. Yeah. And Matiangi now. Some people can add on Magoa. Can you remember another minister? They are all useless. They are all useless. And I was asked to score yeah. them one time. Some of them are my friends. They call me Manyona. How can you give me C? They are useless. They are pale. That's why Matiangi looks like a super minister. That's why Michuki was different. Nyachai. I can remember Nyachai in the older days. So if you have a Nyachai, a Matiangi, a Michuki, if you have three, four Michukis in your government and you are Raila, you have two, three Matiangis, you have two, three Nyachais, hey, things will just, the milk we are talking about, you will see animals producing milk. Yeah, so Sh Shola is right. But she, I know she's also adding a little politics. <laughs> but she's forgetting that 
fellows who have been in this agriculture docket that have been coming from her neighborhood. She wants to forget that, I know. <laughs> the last three or four ministers. Yeah. Okay, since we're talking about devolution, you're talking about governors. Mm. Uh, yes. uh, do you, do, which governor do you feel that maybe he's performed? He's done other governors? In all fairness, it's not very easy to, to look at mm. and say so-and-so is better. But I think Oparanya outshines all governors in this country. If you look at Kakameka, what he has done, partly because you know he was in that line. He was a, he's a man in finance. He was minister in charge of planning. He has worked in government. He understands the functioning of government. And he's a politician. The best governors are those who combine the art of government and the art of politics. Those who are good at politics and they can also be managers, leaders. You need to be a political and, 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 and the other type of leader. You must be a leader in both senses. But if you are just a politician, a pick up domo too, you can't run a county. But if you are also just a manager without leadership, and leadership in this case is much more political than otherwise, you'll fail. So Paranya outshines the rest, if I, unless I'm wrong. Paranya has done fairly well. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now let me take you back a little bit. But let me allow me to add on. Okay. There are also people in North Eastern, because the challenges the people in North Eastern, Garissa, Mandela, Wajia were facing, Sio Kamaza, Oparanya, Kakameka. So if they have been able to do some of those things in Wajia, kudos to them. Should we compare that, what you're saying, to percentage? Maybe say that uh, he's done 10% better than... It is easier yeah. to do 50 kilometers of road in Kakameka than it is to do in Wajia. Okay. Because the things you are facing with, including security, including when the people are willing to go and work there, even engineers. So when we weigh these things, they're difficult now. I was asking, uh, is it high time that the third generation of governors coming in into power, do they now concentrate down here, first of all, deal with the problems of the Mwanainchi? Let's talk about the, the disputes that are, the, com the community disputes that are happening in the country. Do we mm -hmm. settle, first of all, things like those? Uh, we focus on uh, cows, we focus on coffee, than going to the bricks and... Uh, Every county has its unique features and characteristics you need to look you take a hard look at your county and say in my county this should be given priority it can't be uniform but even as Shole says the, that you need that infrastructure you cannot do those good things you are saying without the brick and mortar you need the infrastructure but there's need to balance what most counties have done they are spending all money on salaries they have overemployed and they, they and they continue to overemploy so leaving very little money for 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 for, for, for development expenditure. So we need to put a, a stop on the necessary hiring in counties. And then we can do what Shole is saying. Okay. Now, Deputy President wanted uh, from this, uh, the budget that was read the other day, yes. uh, that uh, the county allocation should be increased from 370 billion to 495 billion. And on the other hand, the BBI was suggesting the same, th almost the same thing, the county allocation should be increased. Uh, do you feel like it's high time that uh, money funds should be increased at county level? First of all, DP Ruto is just a joker because he's joking because he's the one who opposed BBI that wanted to increase the allocation to counties. Secondly, when they were trying to work on the revenue, sharing bill in uh, equitable sharing bill in the senate his side brought a lot of problems you get it so you cannot turn around now and be the one to say that we want to increase this politics uh but basically we need more money to go down to the counties but not in the manner we are doing it so, you don't just sit in the office and say let counties get 500 million we must ask ourselves, what functions are taking place in the counties? There is, there, is, there is a function and there is money for the function. What comes first? We have not even wanted to, to play out revolution, devolution properly. You see, if devolution is, 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 is implemented properly, you'll find that almost everything will be done in the county. Apart from defense, finance, Foreign affairs, there is nothing else you can do in Nairobi. Even for those ministries or functions which have not been developed, let's say, for example, uh, education. It's not devolved. Eh? Only ECD is devolved. What, what can you be doing in Nairobi about education? There is no ministry that can function from Nairobi. What is it doing in Nairobi? All ministries will actualize their mandate down in the counties so if we did that naturally 
Most of this money will just go to the counties naturally through the ministries. The ministry budget is the, the ministry implements it is it's 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 it's, it's, it's uh, policies mm -hmm. eh? actualizes mandate but can only do so at the county level with all its money that is been allocated. So you don't need to to bother so much about how much money you give counties. Okay. Now as we come to the end, uh, if there is anything that you can change mm. uh, from devolution, what would that be and why? The beginning, we, the beginning thing to do, and this happened in Nigeria, we should jail these go governors who have stolen, all of them. Nigeria did that. Is it so that we are talking of the third generation of governors. Mm. We need to be having some of them in jail now. Those who stole Pesa ya Kwanza, 2013. Committee. So when the third generation of governors comes in, they will know you can go to jail. That's the first thing you need to do. Secondly, we need to take a hard look in the future. I know these are sentimental, political, but these counties are useless because they are not viable. They are too small to be viable. We have to bite the bullet and accept. If we need to progress, if we need our children to get, to get jobs, we need units, devolved units that, that are big enough to be economically and politically viable. In the bombers draft, eh, we were talking of around 14, between 8 and 14, maximum 18 regions. What were Kaogopa Majimbo? So if you had like 14 counties or regional governments, within, under those regional governments, then, then you can have these small counties. Those 14 can be econ big enough to be economically viable. That's long term, but you have to, to bite the bullet as oh, people. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, Professor. Well, uh, that's where we wrap up uh, the question for today. Till we do have the next episode of The Big Question, uh, enjoy the rest of your day.